So we know about Scheffler. Now we got the next two, actually the next three players we all have. So that's tipped you off on who I'm picking. So <laughs> I'm taking Wyndham Clark, uh, and I'm basically just taking him. I'm putting, uh, I'm just putting a little bit of money on him. Um, but I, I just like the way that he's trending here. He's gotten better each time, including his five under par 16th place finish last year. I think that's nice considering he doesn't have a whole lot of experience in a lot of different golf courses like that. So I think that's something I want to take advantage of. And, he, and again, we know how hot he is. And I think it mm -hmm. would be – now, look, he did win at Pebble, so it's not like he hasn't won this year. But, you know, it wasn't a four-round win. Um, but I still think it would be nice for him, and I'm sure he would really like to get another win heading into major season. But anyway, I just like him on the golf course – um, yeah. which is why I'm going to go ahead and take him. And the other thing is, is I got Scheffler at th two or three to one and I've got Clark right. who's now 12 or he was 14 to one. It's like, that's a big difference. That's why I was like, wow, you know, I can get window. Cause I actually thought window Clark could have been like eight, eight to one to tell you the truth. So I was <laughs> I like, agree. I was at 14 to one. I grabbed him like that. I was like, yeah, I got to take him in the same way that you might think about Sef Scheffler. I was thinking about Clark where I was like, well, I'm getting 14 to one. This is a weak field. Why wouldn't I take him? So that's why I decided to, and I, I put 50 bucks on him. I said, why not? I got him at 14 to one. Yeah. I mean, the clear second best player in this field. Again, if we look at strokes gain total over the last three months, it's Scheffler, number one, it's Wyndham Clark, number two. I'm with you. I don't think their odds should be this far apart. I mean, go back to the players. They were separated by three millimeters, right? Yeah. If Clark's, Clark's putt is, you know, three millimeters to the right. They're going into a playoff. This is a long driver heavy golf course that I know he won at Pebble Clark did, which was a surprise, but you ideally want him on, you know, long driver heavy golf courses. So it should be a really good fit for him. And look, uh, Scotty has won a couple of big events. He's made a lot of money. Uh, he goes away for a week. Let's remember his wife is going to give birth in about a month or two. So, you know, there's potential distractions when you, because, you know, you go back to back, you know, it, it, there's, that's all you're focused on. You go from one event to the other. Now you stay, you go away. So maybe, I'm sure Scotty's got bigger things on his mind than winning the Houston Open. Let's just put it that way. He's got the Masters so. coming up in a few weeks. Yeah, we hope so. I, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, but you have the Gala and Zalatoris mm -hmm. as two of your three picks. Uh, this will be the first time for Zalatoris coming off the miscut at players. And the Gala uh, mm. had a big difference from his first to his second appearance. Uh, he was seven over par in his first appearance when he finished 61st in 2022. And I don't want to get into the whole year season thing because it's kind of screwed mm -hmm. up. It'll screw up your mind if you think about it in Houston because of the wraparound. <laughs> uh, but yep. the Gala uh, improved from 61st to 22nd from seven over par to four under par. So that's 11 stroke difference from his first appearance here to his second. And he, in his last appearance here, he closed with a 64, which I believe was, was the best round of the day. So he should have some good vibes coming into this event. I think he even lives um, in the Houston area now. Um, and yeah, I went with these two guys cause I, I know it's been a season of long shots and I know that it's a pretty, um, you know, weak, thin field at the top. So maybe a long shot wins again. I just think if Scheffler, brings even like his C game, as long as he doesn't bomb in order to beat him, like it's going to have to be one of these other like guys in the next tier. Like I think, you know, if, if Sahith or will play their a game and Scheffler plays his B minus game, like these, these guys can beat Scotty Scheffler. So yeah, Sahith. So again, talking about strokes game total over the last three months, it's Scheffler one, Wyndham Clark two, Sahith Tagala is number three in this field. Um, top tens at waste management API and the players, he has, re I, we talked about this last year, I think. So hit Tagala's weakness being off the tee, just spraying it too much. And he's still doing it on occasion. And that's kind of what's cost him a chance to win some of these tournaments is he's, he's making too many like double bogeys because he, he gets wild off the tee. But still in general, he's really improved his off the tee game. He was 134th last year in strokes gain off the tee. He's 25th so far this that's season huge. in strokes gain off the tee. He's still a good iron player. He's still an excellent putter. Um, and he is um, fifth on our list of, you know, top 10 players on difficult golf courses. So I think Sahith is ready to win. Zell Torres coming off the missed cut. I'm not that concerned. It was a bad putting week and a bad around the green week for Zell Torres at players. 
he still gained strokes on approach, um, two, 2.3 strokes gained on approach. Of course, he had come fourth at API, second at Genesis, 13th at Farmers in his um, three previous appearances. So I, I still think he's close to a win. And of course, as I always say with Zal Torres, I think the tougher the golf course, um, the better chance he has to win. Yeah, I tell you the truth. I actually would, uh, if I was taking one of the two, I'd take the Gala this week. Uh, he's just really dialed in and playing yeah. as good as he's ever played. And um, and again, like I said, he made a drastic move from his first appearance to his second. Like you said, his last appearance uh, on that Sunday was was a nice nice round. So um, yeah, and 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 I also like the strategy of taking. Because I do think there's a big difference once you get through the top four players. I think there's yep. a, there's a, then there's a there's a little gap. So you got you got Scheffler, then you got the, then Scheffler and Clark. You can go one two. Then you got Zalatoris and and Zagala three four. But then there's a gap. So I like this the uh, the idea of taking Zalatoris and Zagala, mm-hmm. combining them, and just hey, one of them wins, I'm in good shape. Because exactly. the odds. I mean, you're getting almost even double than Clark and forget right. about Scheffler. So, yeah, so um, not, not not a bad strategy to do that. Um, meanwhile, Finau, you, look, Finau just loves playing Mexico and Houston, and, and this is like his part of the country. Um, yeah. But he's a defending champ, so winning back-to-back, not an easy thing. I don't know. I'm not going to – the only reason that I wouldn't – rule him out is just because he plays well in these types of events, but he didn't really play well at Mexico and he's just not having a great year um, and really hasn't played all that great, even though he's won a couple of times in the last couple of years. He hasn't really, that's, that's really all he's done is win those events. He hasn't really done much else than that. Yeah. He finally maybe figured out the putter too. He's actually gained strokes putting in the last three events, but now the, the hot ball striking has kind of cooled off. He, uh, last week at Valspar was, Easily. It was, it was the first time all year that he, he lost strokes tee to green and he, he did so pretty convincingly. So it's like he figured out the putter, but now, you know, the, the ball striking is kind of cooled off. So he just, you just kind of can't put it all together. Okay. And then you've got day who's dropped to 22 to one, actually day and Kim are on my board. So Jason day at 22, see what Kim at 30, uh, Jason, um, I like the fact that he won uh, Byron Nelson last year. Matter of fact, he's won, the, the, the Byron Nelson event twice. So he's, he's won in Texas, those two events. He right. was seventh in this event three years ago, 16th last year. He's playing well enough. So I think that Jason, uh, if he's going to have any chance at the majors and to have a really good year, I think it would be nice for him to get one of these types of wins first. And Siwoo Kim uh, made an improvement from missing the cut. His first appearance uh, to 35th, his second appearance, one under par. Nothing great, but uh, he was runner-up at Byron Nelson last year, of course, in Texas. He's trending in the right direction. Sixth place is last uh, go-around. And he's made eight cuts this year, all eight cuts, uh, with six top 30s and one top 10 being in his last event. So I think this is a good time to take him. Yeah, Day and Siwoo show up top 10 on both um, strokes gained on difficult courses and strokes gained in Texas days, actually third on both of those lists. So D- day and uh, Tagala are the two guys I'm considering for one and done this week. Yeah, that makes sense. Cause I'm same thing with me with day. I already played Tagala, um, but I could definitely see that. Uh, and I would, I would consider see what Kim as well, because I don't know how many people get to take him. So I think he's somebody that, um, could help you win this week. And there's one other guy on my list that I, I might consider, but I probably won't because he's too unpredictable. But that's why Siwa Kim is someone that, if you're ever going to take him and one and done, why not this week? But could be Jason Day. Okay. So, and then you have now, you, you the, the next grouping here, I mean, you, the all four of these next, actually, Norin, Mitchell, Jaeger, and well, let's just go with those three. They're, they're between thirty-five and forty-five to one, and I think yeah. all three of them are good plays if you want to go in this area here. Because you had Mitchell last week. I mean, we have had like the worst luck with. Craig, we I... had multiple uh, third-round 
lead we've had multiple third round leaders the two of us winning by multiple strokes and we and none of our guys have been able to hold on you had mitchell last week with a two-stroke lead into the final round and he it completely plays like crap which is Gone. Yeah. which is how our players have been playing when they go into the final round in great positions they just fall apart on sunday yeah so but mitchell mitchell, mitchell, mitchell made me want to quit golf betting last week <laughs> Through, through three rounds, he had gained like 12 strokes tee to green and had lost like two and a half strokes putting. He was putting horribly, but he was still up by two strokes. He could have been up by five or six. Now, it wouldn't have mattered because he played so horrible on Sunday. That was, I'm, I'm sure Keith Mitchell's a nice guy. That was one of the most pathetic Sunday eight rounds I've ever seen. Like, I know the driver was off. That's one thing. But then just iron shots weren't good, leaving putt short. It was just a a pretty gutless performance by Mitchell. So like he's playing excellent. That's why I bet him last week. And like, again, the ball striking was still there prior to Sunday at, at Valspar. But after seeing that Sunday performance, I, I cannot bet him to win a golf tournament right now. I hear you. It's uh, it, it, that's the thing that would concern me as well, because it's like, it's not like he hasn't won before and he's played pretty well the last couple of years at the early part of the season. But it's like, Dude, you're acting like you've never won anything in your life. I mean, that's just, that was awful because that 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 was not a coincidence that it was Sunday, and that's just yeah. that that yeah. something all in his head. And he went to pot from the very first swing on on hole number one uh, on Sunday. So that's the thing because Mitchell has trended well here, including ninth last year. He's got four top twenties in his last five events. But it's hard to take somebody after the way they played on Sunday last uh, just a few days ago. Uh, Norin, it could be interesting because how about this? He went from a miscut eight over par to a fourth place eight under par. That's a 16 stroke difference. First appearance to second. He's made 11 straight cuts on tour. Seven of those are top 30s. Three top 10s, two top fives, runner up. His last two, 19th and nine. And he's on your list. So I think Norin could be an interesting play, even though, um, not even though, but he, he has played better in the fall. But it's surprising that he still has not had a PGA Tour win yet. It's just very surprising. Yeah, yeah that, you know, I starred Norin on Fantasy National on Sunday night when I was doing my initial research, kind of hoping to see like a, 50 or 60 to one on him when the odds came out on Monday morning, but I, th I think he might have opened at 40. Now he's down to 35. Um, it's just too short yeah. for me for a guy who hasn't won, but he, he is playing well. I think he'll play well. I think he's a good, you know, maybe top 10 bet. I think he's someone to, you know, if you're playing DraftKings to consider playing Alex Norman, I just, I, I can't get on board um, at, at, at 35 to one. Yep. Uh, Jaeger at 45 to one uh, also made a big deal uh, move. 35th in his first appearance at six over par, the ninth in his second appearance at six mm -hmm. under par. He had a 12 stroke difference. So whatever the, I mean, this apparently it seems to be a, cause this has happened a lot here. It seems to be a golf course that, Hey, you know, it, it's almost like, yeah, it would be preferable if you played there once because the second time around it could be a big deal. So even if maybe if you see a player that hasn't played all that well in his first appearance at this golf course, don't, shy away from taking him because you could see a big move in his second appearance. Mm -hmm. But the problem with all of a sudden Jaeger, who had that big run of no, no, no miss cuts and whatever it was, 17 events, whatever. And then as soon as it came to an end, he's now missed three out of his last five cuts. So. Yeah. I, you know, I, I wonder maybe it's, maybe it's just Florida. He didn't like the Florida swing. He did struggle putting in, in his last three um, or maybe the hot streaks just over for Stefan Jaeger. So. Yeah, and it's not that he can't win because even on the I think he I think in his in this run, I think he does have a top ten out of the last five, I believe. Yeah, he finished third he finished third in Mexico. Oh, top five, yeah. even better. And that was Mexico. So not 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 a bad similarity here coming to Texas. So again, Jaeger at forty five to one. At least he's forty five to one compared to Norin, who's down right. to thirty five to one. Uh, all right, so, and then let's go now to one of my picks, and that is going to be the next pick on the odds is going to be, I'm going I'm to I'm gonna go with Hughes. Um, I just think that uh, he even mentioned it, they even mentioned it in the broadcast, because I know I, I had looked at his chart 
at the end of the year last year and thought, hey, you know what? Uh, he, he's not playing all that poorly. Uh, matter of fact, he had a runner-up at RSM in the fall, and now he's getting on a nice run. And he's even admitted it that he's close to really, you know, getting it. And sure enough, he almost had it. I actually thought he was going to win last week. I thought that he was like, if I had to put money on a live bet uh, with a couple hours left in, the, in that event last year, when he last week when he had that one stroke lead, I would have, I would have pet him. I, I just thought he was going to win. He was playing the best at that time, and then he just kind of fell apart late. But mm -hmm. he's got three straight top thirties here. One top 10, so that's good. He likes the golf course. He's trending really well. Had a really good showing last week. And you're getting 60 to 1. So that's yeah. a big difference. So that's why I like him this week. Yeah, I think, I think the number's good for a guy who's playing well in his play bill here before. Um, I think with Hughes, you're always kind of hoping the putter carries him, which it did last week. He gained 9.6 strokes putting <laughs> last week, which is pretty absurd. But um, you know, maybe maybe it can stay hot. Maybe he can chip in a few more times, which I know we did. On I, I'm with you. I, when he you know he chipped in on Sunday, he made a super long putt somewhere near the turn. Yeah. And I thought um, it was just kind of his day, but he, he fell apart on the back nine. All right. Uh, next up in the odds is your final pick, your long shot, Luke List. And even though Luke does not have um, a big history here, except one top 15, uh, and he hasn't played particularly well in his last three events. Uh, this is a, a tough golf course, and Luke List does play well uh, at tough golf courses. So why did you like him, though, particularly this week? Oh, these, oh I just, Luke List just bumped up to 75 to him <laughs> as we're recording. Look at that. Um, yeah, I just like him on tougher, long courses. I mean, he won Torrey Pines in 2022, tough, long course. He was second at Genesis just a few starts back, tough long golf course. Just look at the last 50 rounds in this field. He's 20th best off the tee, 18th best on approach. He's third best in proximity from 200 plus yards, which you're, you're going to get a lot of those longer approach approach shots this week. So it's just the type of course where I think list could kind of pop up and surprise as he almost did again at, at Genesis, uh, uh, you know, just a few weeks ago. All right. And then uh, another one of my picks is right there uh, at 70 to one now, even though I got him at 80 to one. And that is Joel Damon. And wow. Joel Damon uh, has played here twice, fifth and ninth. So that's as good as it gets out of anybody that's played here. Uh, his last three events, he's played better because he had a bad run there for a while where he was just awful for almost uh, six months or so. But he's starting to play better. He was 11th at Players not too long ago. And maybe the most important reason to take Joel Damon this week is it would be the second – It would be it's the trend of the Gilligan hat. <laughs> and can – can we get back-to-back -back Gilligan hat PGA Tour winners? Can we go from Peter Malnati to Joel Damon? And that'll just start a whole new uh, trend for that'd be, uh, young golfers that'd be everywhere. Fitting. That'd be fitting for this season, for sure. <laughs> get back-to-back. -back. You know, I, I'm i glad you mentioned Damon because I hadn't really pulled up his stats. He's playing even better than you might think these last two weeks because he's still putted horribly the last two weeks despite finishing 11th at the players and 49th at Valspar. The off the tee and especially the approach game Gained 5.2 strokes on approach at players, gained 8.2 strokes on approach at Valspar. That is tied for the best approach event of his entire career. Wow. So his irons are hot. If he can just putt, like, feel the average. Get on a hot streak with the putter. Yeah, if he can yeah. just putt okay and not be a disaster on the greens. I, that's a, I, I like that bet. Well, I don't know what if you have any of that data now, but let's keep in mind, when you finish ninth and fifth on this golf course, I'm assuming maybe that you're putting well here? Maybe? He, yeah, yeah. In uh, 2021, he gained 1.8 strokes putting, and in 2022, he lost half a stroke putting, so basically field average. So, again, if he, if he can do that, and and both times at Houston, he's had awesome approach play. Um, so, again, if he can just if he can putt like he did his first two appearances and stay hot with the irons, I think he could be in the mix. All right, so Joel Damon, keep an eye on him. Uh, also, um, as far as uh, – the, the, actually, I think that's just one more pick – uh, let's just double check, make sure. I, yeah, just uh, one more, one more pick. Oh, that's right. I, I didn't carry that over, and that is. Um, I'm pretty sure it's just Novak. Let me just go ahead and. Uh, Back switch. on Novak. Yeah, switch that. No, it's not. That was my last pick because Novak was part of my picks, and then I just, um, I didn't take them. But all of our picks are done. So let's talk about some of the long shots that we. Uh, 
might consider, and that's one of them. So definitely, I, I would I, I would put a buck on Novak because he's still playing really well for someone that's getting a hundred to one. I mean, he's a hundred and eighty to one to begin the week again, and then he drops down to. I don't know why they keep putting him at one hundred and eighty to one when he keeps dropping down to one hundred in the last few times. He's got four top twenties in his last five now and three top tens. So I think Novak in this field. I think Matty Schmidt. Go back to him. He still, he still uh, is playing well. He was 17th last week, so he's got mm-hmm. three straight top 30s. And, and Schmidt is 150 to one. Um, other long shots. Uh, I put uh, a buck each on uh, Dietrich, Hubbard, Bramlett, Yuan, and Ryan Moore. So yeah, those like are Bramlett. my long shots. So. I like Bramlett. He's a bomber. I think he's had some success here. I looked at um, I looked at two Euros. Ryan Fox, who's on on the screen right here at 100 to one. Again, he just popped as a guy who plays well on tough golf courses. Has won on the the DP Tour. Um, Bob, Bobby McIntyre, like I don't know what happened to him. He was on the Ryder Cup team like six months ago. Yeah, <laughs> he he, he hadn't. He you know he's he's interesting because a couple of years ago there was a lot expected of McIntyre and then mm-hmm. his game just didn't follow he was just okay he just didn't even in Europe when he was playing there last year he didn't do much but I think yeah. he had that momentum from the previous year that that's why he made the Ryder Cup team and he did well but and he's got a good game the problem is he hasn't translated that to the golf courses yet but right. and that's and now he's trying to do it on the PGA Tour so he didn't play particularly well in Europe last year, and now he's trying to do it in, in America. I just, that's not a good, you yeah. know, method uh, of success. Yeah. So, but he's talented. Two, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's kind of my thing. Just the talent level for a field like this. I think he was 130 to one last I checked. Two super bombs I looked at. Um, Parker Cootie and one one of the Cootie twins. Um, Parker, you know, they're Texas guys. Both hit it a long ways. Parker has been playing a bit better. Um, I just think he's a good fit on this course. You look at, you know, two of the long courses he's played so far this year, 25th at Farmers, you know, at Torrey Pines. He was 24th at the Mexico Open. So I think this is the type of course you want Parker Cootie on. And then the other guy was Rico Hoey, Rico Huey. Okay. Uh, another bomber. Ball striking has been on fire lately the putter is bad maybe he's just a bad putter and that's not going to change but i'm um, just looking at the ball striking numbers he's a long hitter um you know he uh was uh, 54th at, at valspar last week but again you know did make the cut gained on approach gained off the tee um he was 250 to one last i checked so uh, th- those are two of the longer shots i would i would consider uh, by the way yuan uh who finished uh, fifth last week in his last 14 events he has four finishes uh, between fourth and sixth, so he's uh, you know he's a couple of uh, guy, shots away. That guy chip in was it three times he chipped in on yeah, Sunday? something like that. Yeah, come on, thirty fifth here I last year. Get, no, why can't I get one of those? Why can't I get someone who chips in three times? Yeah, right. Uh, and by the way, Bramlett, uh, his best PGA Tour finish was at Byron Nelson in twenty twenty one, when he finished seventh, and he and. Uh, he went from seven over his first appearance here, five over his second appearance, and six under when he finished ninth last year. So yeah. Bramlett's at 130 to one ish, and uh, Ryan Moore, uh, Ryan Moore, uh, maybe this is just a little, maybe maybe it's just one week. But if you look at it, he played well in the fall. He had three top 15s and one top five in the fall, and now he's coming off the fifth place finish. So, you know, Moore's a decent player. It's just after a couple of years, his game has just gone to, to crap. Not sure what happened to him. So He's a Texas guy too, isn't he? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe um, I'm making a pretty sure he's a Texas guy. Either. And he was third at the Texas Open in 2019 and runner-up in 2008 at the Byron Nelson. A couple of Texas events. Hubbard was runner-up in this event. The very first appearance he made, 13 on the par. Then he went 50th. I don't know what happened to him when he got disqualified last year, um, but he wasn't playing well anyway. He's not playing mm-hmm. particularly well, but he's made all eight of his cuts this year. So, you know, he's had experience on this golf course before. You know, we've talked about him 
uh, earlier in the year. You, you, you took him a few times. Um, yeah. So considering he does have a runner up here um, and he hasn't missed a cut all year, maybe not a, maybe not a totally bad idea. By the way, I also uh, put uh, a buck on KH Lee. And let's remember, he went back to back in Texas at Byron Nelson. Right. And in his first appearance here, he was six over par. So maybe we're going to get one of those uh, big dramatic shifts uh, from Cage Lee from his first appearance to his second appearance. And his last three go. PGA Tour appearances, he does have a ninth and a fourth. So uh, this might be good timing this week. Maybe, you know, he would be a good fantasy play or somebody that if you want to get him in your top ten, yeah. uh, that kind of thing, uh, you might be able to do well with Cage Lee this, this week. Yeah, that's where I'm at with all these long shots. Like, I think top top 10 bets. I know it's been a year of long shots, but I, I still think it's going to be one of those top 10 players that, that wins this week. 